Hello and welcome back to the Rocket League Mapping tutorial series. This is episode 10, Making a HUD. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you this basic HUD that I made, how to put in a UDK, and how to set variables, and how to use FS commands. So, what I got here is I got a dynamic text set to words text, and I got a button set to square, and I have basic code written. So, if I go in here and I click this button, nothing happens, but it will in UDK, and then it says hello there. This is basic code that I just wrote. Uh, basically, there's variable words, which is a string, which displays hello there. And there's an event frame, event listener, and a button event listener, which uh, will both act doing different things. The event frame basically makes it so whenever it reaches this frame in the flash timeline, it's going to do whatever it says here, which in this case, it's setting the text box equal to that string. And when you press the button down, it's going to set it equal to that FS command, which we have named a signal. Two things you want to make sure when you save it. First of all, make sure you're on ActionScript 3.0 and not 2.0. If you use 2.0, it's not going to work. It's going to crash your game. So make sure that your ActionScript is in 3.0 and you can disable HTML wrapper because you don't need it. And then you can just hit file and publish. And... When you save it, make sure it's in UDK game flash and in a folder. It has to be in flash and then it has to be a folder in flash, but make sure it is not the same as your map file. If it's the same exact thing, it's going to cause weird issues with UDK. It doesn't like it. So make it a different name, save you some trouble and then save it in there. And then your Swift will also appear in that same exact folder. So let's go into UDK and see how we can set these variables and use this HUD. Okay, so once you're in UDK, we're gonna import that from that folder and you're gonna import the Swift. And this is the thing that you published from Flash. And it's gonna auto a package and a name. This is why you need the folder to be different because the folder name is gonna be your package name. And if it's the same as the map, it's going to cause a lot of issues since we're using map packages and not UDK packages. But it's going to go under new packages. Just right click and save it. And then you can save it wherever. It doesn't matter. Give UDK a second. And then we will be able to see our HUD in our package, which should be at the bottom since we just saved it in a spot where I know I can find it. So once you find your package, wherever you saved it, we're gonna have this Swift movie that we can now use. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna go into, into Kismet and we're gonna create a new subsequence. I'm just gonna name this um, HUD so we can just keep everything organized. And then I am going to do new event level loaded. And I'm going to right click new action GFX UI open GFX movie. And when it's loaded invisible, I want to open the GFX movie. And then once you have that note added, you can just hit that green arrow. And since we have it selected in the content browser right here, it's going to fill that in as the Swift movie. And then you can find a few of these settings on the scale form documentation. But there, you really won't ever need to use any of these. And if you ever need help, go check out the scale forum tutorial series made by Matthew Doyle. Um, that's super helpful and understanding how it works, how HUD works. So now that we have that linked, we're going to right click. We're going to move a rename. We're going to rename it. And we're going to move it to tutorial series version 2. And we're just going to name it tutorial HUD. And we're going to hit OK. Let UDK do its thing. Of almost crashing. Oh, OK. And then we're going to exit out. And you're going to want to hit save selected. Make sure when you hit save selected you don't select any dummy classes or anything like that. Because that will cause issues. So we're going to save it. And you're going to get this error. Just hit no and then continue. And it'll say it failed to save correctly. And that means you did it right. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to restart UDK. Okay, we're back in UDK. And now your HUD will work. 
and you really only need to do all those steps if you have images. If you don't have images, you don't need to restart UDK. So let's go into Kismet and then let's go into that subsequence and let's set up some variables. So we have two variables in here. We have, oh, I should probably, I'm gonna empty this actually. So no, I don't want you auto saving. I'm actually gonna delete this because I don't want to actually say hello there. I want it to say nothing so I can set a new decay. So I'm going to save and I'm going to republish. And then in UDK, I'm going to go wherever this is and I'm going to re-import. And if you have images or if you add any images, they will automatically add and you won't have to do their whole moving or renaming thing again. But if your images start to show up as green boxes, make sure you redo it. Make sure you did it right. Now that we're in Kismet, we want to set that variable that is named to words, which is the string, and which I have since deleted and re-imported. So we're going to go to UDK and we're going to GFX new action, GFX UI, set variable. Now we will actually want to do this a second after the UI comes up. And this is because if you try and set a variable before, if you try and set a variable and the movie isn't open, it's going to crash the game because it's trying to set a variable that doesn't exist. So we're going to right click and new object variable, and then we're going to put that to movie player. Then we're going to right click and new variable string, then we're connect that. And the string variable, I'm going to put hello string is set. And then in the variable, I'm going to put words because that is exactly what it is right here. And I also have an FS command that is called signal. So once I click the button, I want to display text on the screen. I don't know. I'm just making an example for an FS command. Go to an event, UI FS command. And we're going to make this client side because it only works client side in my um, in my testing, it's only worked client side. And then we're actually going to select our tutorial HUD in the console browser, and then we're going to hit that again. And then this is called signal. And it is called whatever you put right here. So it's called signal. So that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call it signal. So now that we have signal, we're going to right click, new action. And then we're gonna just uh, we're just gonna draw some text on the screen to know it works. So display it at all players, and let's set this to negative five, negative 300, 100, maybe maybe 250. Actually, we don't want to go that far, or just 200. Actually, whatever it is. And then we're gonna hit one. I only want to set it for two seconds, actually, and then button is pressed and that's it so if I actually go over here and I hit play and viewport you can see our, our UI opens hello string is set and you can see our little mouse cursor which is just a box and then if we hit this it's not going to show anything and that's because draw text doesn't work when you play in the viewport. But if we go into Rocket League right now, this is going to open and it's going to work perfectly and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so we're in game and you can see hello string is set and it does this whenever the level is loaded. So I know it's working correctly. I need to join blue so I don't die. And you can see our mouse works and the reason you add a mouse is because by default Rocket League does not have a working mouse so if you hit resume game you'll see that the mouse disappears so you have to make one of the custom and flash and it says hello string is set we hit the button and it says button is pressed it's a little overlaid but you can see it and every time we press it it's going to play that fs command which makes that draw text go up and that's going to be the end of this tutorial if you want to see the flash file and all the comments, make sure to check out the Google Drive along with a few of the links to videos that show how to do everything that I did in this video. And with that said, I'll see you in the next episode.